Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody, and today I am so glad and grateful to have my friend Stephanie Kwong on the show. She is the host of the Rise Higher podcast. I met her in LA pre-pandemic, and we were just soul sisters, both working towards common goals, building our podcast, and our goals were in such alignment to help as many people as possible. And what she does is truly incredible. So I'm very, very excited to have her here today. And I was so excited to reconnect with her because we used to hang out and co-work at The Wing, which was our women's only co-working space in West Hollywood um, pre-pandemic. And so it was just a beautiful place where we would all work on dreams. And our mutual friend, Rebecca, introduced us and it was just a fast and easy friendship. And she's someone who can really help you, like the name of her podcast, Rise Higher. But she's all of about really getting beyond the conscious mind and delving deep into the subconscious. You can heal those misbeliefs and truly live the life that you're meant to live. And so we had an epic conversation with her today, and I was so grateful to be joined by my co-host, Ashley Filling Jim, who needs no introduction, but I will give her one just in case you haven't been listening lately. Ashley is a former big law attorney who now helps wellness entrepreneurs build their businesses. And her mission is to help people who are helping people. So Stephanie, Ashley, and I had a wonderful conversation. I learned a lot. I know that you will too. I'm very excited to share this episode with you. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. She's a subconscious rewiring coach, hypnotherapist, NLP practitioner, breathwork facilitator, and host of the Rise Higher Podcast. Please welcome my friend Stephanie Kwong to the show. Welcome, Stephanie. Oh, thank you, ladies, for having me, and thank you to everyone who's listening. Yay. I'm so glad to have you. I'm so honored to have Ashley, my co-host, is back. Welcome back, Ashley. So much fun to be here. Yes. Kick Ash Law, everyone. Um, So Stephanie, first of all, we need a major catch up. So Stephanie and I were besties from The Wing, which was... (laughs) Yes, I miss The Wing so much. I know. Okay. So it was this female only co-working space and it was the most beautiful space you've ever seen it was in LA and essentially it got shut down because of the pandemic but it was such a beautiful place to connect with other people and I met Stephanie she's a podcaster it's called Rise Higher and I was like this is my girl this is my jam so I'm excited to finally have you on the show well I'm so grateful to be here and um, I love how literally the universe like had me think of you in a meditation I DM'd you and you're like actually do you want to record on the show? And I was like, absolutely. freaking lutely So again, I'm excited to be here and to also connect with you, Ashley. Um, I know this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I cannot wait to learn from you. So tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and then I really want to go back to how you got here because your story is really, really fascinating. <laughs> so um, I am a subconscious rewiring coach 
and I do other pra- techniques too. So like hypnotherapy, NLP, breath work, um, somatic experiencing. But my biggest gift I feel and what I'm most passionate about is essentially subconscious rewiring, which means that I can help people and I work with like really high profile people in my private practice or high achievers. And I help them to identify and remove the mental and emotional roadblocks to achieve their next level through the work that I do. And I really believe that when people can master their mind and redesign or reprogram or rewire their subconscious to align with what they want versus right now, a lot of us have subconscious beliefs that are wired against what we want. But if it's wired to align with what you want, then you're able to achieve the results that you want personally, professionally, financially, and really shift from a life of like limitation and stress to one of joy and freedom. So I'm really passionate about helping people to do that because I think even though it takes deep work, to me, it's the shortcut. Um, Because a lot of people will listen, you know, to podcasts or read books or go to therapy or do coaching. And I was a coach myself, still am. But when you're just working on the conscious level, instead of getting into the subconscious where it matters, you can stay stuck in patterns for a long time and not actually achieve what you want or maybe only have micro shifts when it's possible to have macro shifts. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so like part of me wants to jump in and go, well, how do we do it? But what I'd (laughs) like to do is actually have you take us back to how you got into this, because I think hearing your journey helps us understand the techniques and how they work and why they work so we can get to those. But like take us back to, I know that, you know, your childhood really shaped your view of the world and how you got into self-help and self-love and all of the things. So take us back and tell us how you got into this. Yeah. So I grew up to two immigrant parents where normally personal development is not something that's encouraged or even introduced. And, but I, my parents had quite a volatile relationship and my mom finally, when I was 13 years old, divorced my father. And when she did, and even when she was going through the challenging years leading up to her decision to divorce him, she dove into personal development work herself. Now, this is kind of unheard of because, again, in my culture, it's not encouraged or even really known about. And something, though, in my mom's spirit had her choose to go, where I'm at is not where I'm going to be, and I'm going to heal this. And she had a very traumatic childhood. I mean, she was abandoned in China when she was five years old wow. and left to fend for herself. Oh, my God. Yeah. So for her, that it started at a very young age, and all this imprinting for her of feeling unworthy, unlovable started you know, when she was five and probably even before that. So something inside of her had her choose a different path. And so my mom, I mean, I grew up – listening to Tony Robbins on tape, that ages me, in my house because my mom bought it off of an infomercial. Um, I watched my mom go to vision quests and sit you know, outside for three days fasting and just to get wisdom to come through and to clear and cleanse. She went to drum circles. She was in therapy. She was doing women's circles. She was creating vision boards. And I just absorbed that by proxy. And I've always been fascinated with people and I've always had a heart to serve. I mean, ever since I was a little girl, I tried, I got turned away volunteering when I was nine years old. My friend Dina Lannerman and I went to the SPCA and we tried to volunteer there and they said, how old are you? We said nine and a year too young, go away. But I know, it was those that were like, we're too young to hold puppies and kittens. Right. Uh, but anyway, I still then started volunteering at my mom's friend's nursery to being a candy striper to um, studying when I, I went to UC Berkeley and I studied psychology there because I was just so fascinated with people and human potential. And it probably came from my experience of just absorbing what I was learning, you know, witnessing what my mom went through when I was growing up. And I worked with the homeless there. I actually trained to work the suicide hotline etc. And on it goes is, is my work of volunteering. But um, I actually started working in the entertainment industry after college. And I moved to Los Angeles. And through it all, I at, so at one point, finally about eight years later, I really kind of had like one of those come to Jesus moments where I was like witnessing who how I was being and how my life was working in entertainment. And I was like, ugh. 
I was so cutthroat in how I was. I was always paranoid about if I was going to get screwed out of a deal. I, my ego was running the show of like, look at who I'm hanging out with, these celebrities, these high profile, like blah, blah, blah. It's just stuff that just I realized was so soul sucking instead of soul giving. Mm-hmm. And But we can find ourselves in those situations yeah. before we even realize yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it was so polar opposite of how I was before growing up. And so, and I had actually a huge opportunity with Shonda Rhimes, who created Grey's Anatomy, literally yeah. had been chosen to be mentored for a show that I was developing. And I screwed all of that up because just self-worth stuff. And also it just wasn't aligned. And so I ended up really sitting with myself and going, gosh, what actually fulfills me? And what came forward was remembering all those times when I had volunteered, like giving back. And so I made a decision where I said, I don't know what's next, but whatever is next has to be in service or contribution. So I started sorting through all these different jobs as a bridge job to figure out what was next. And I ended up getting a job running operations at a really high-end live-in weight loss facility. And I knew I could be of service and give back to them, to, pe- to the clients there in some way, knowing about self-worth and self-esteem issues. Because all the while, you know, starting from when I was a kid, listening to Tony Robbins and watching my mom doing her thing, I also immersed myself into different trainings and retreats and readings and all that starting when I was a teenager. And so... That is so cool, by the way, to go (laughs) grow up with that. I wonder how you feel about healing generational trauma. Oh, I think it's necessary. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, if you benefited from your mom's own healing... Yeah, I really think I did because I saw that there was a pathway that was different than what the trajectory she was on. And I witnessed her Mm -hmm. taking personal responsibility and changing it and also changing it from with my brother and I. I mean, she was abandoned when she was five and had no idea what love even meant. And yet Mm -hmm. I still to this day, well, except for my boyfriend now, um, but it's been one year with him. But with my mom, my whole life, I felt unconditional love and she had no model of that. So it's blows my mind that this woman, my mother is able and to hold unconditional love for others when she'd never actually experienced it herself. And so she already turned the tides generationally with my brother and I and how my brother and I are choosing to be, you know, he's the father and hopefully one day I'll be a mother. But, um, how we want to be moving forward. And already right now I am a mother. And since I'm a stepmother to my boyfriend's kids and it's beautiful that I, you know, my mom essentially was a catalyst for it. And then now I get to live on and continue her healing through the people I get to support in my life. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Food Heals Nation, you know how excited I get to share with you my latest nutritional discoveries and score exclusive discount codes for you whenever I can. Well, this might be the best offer I've scored for you yet. So listen up. All right. I have been taking Athletic Greens for about a month and a half now, and this is something that I believe we should be taking every single day day. It is a green powder that has every single thing that you need nutritionally and it tastes delicious. So I was trying to figure out what the flavor profile was. I was like wine tasting basically. Oh, I taste hints of papaya and pineapple. Um, And I was right. But there's also vanilla, broccoli, cherry, carrot. That's how they flavor these delicious nutritional athletic greens. So athletic greens has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole source ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, so much more. And I recently got the chance to travel to Tulum and then North Carolina. And so I was on a plane. And one of the hardest things about being on a plane for me is that I can't bring my green juice on board. You know how I love my green juice. And so it was so convenient. I just took the travel packs and I put them in my water bottle, shook them up and drank them on the plane so I could feel really healthy to and from all of my destinations. And I was also taking their liquid vitamin D. 
You know how I feel about vitamin D, that most of us, most of the population are actually vitamin D deficient and how important it is for supporting our immune system on a daily basis. And that's why I'm so grateful because Athletic Greens is offering Food Heals listeners a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. If you go to athleticgreens.com slash food heals. Wow. What an amazing offer. You basically never have to buy vitamin D ever again. Okay. But not for a year. I mean, that's an incredible offer and they know that once you try it, you're going to love it. I know you are as well. Um, so I'm very excited to share them with you. And I know that if you do nothing else to boost your health, this is something that could make a huge difference. It's a life-changing nutritional habit because it's that all-in-one superfood powder that's got everything you need. Even my friend Melanie, when we were in Tulum, um, I gave her some athletic greens to try. And first of all, she thought it was delicious. But second of all, she had all her vitamins and pills lined up on the counter. And she was like, I think that athletic greens could actually replace all of these because it had everything that she was taking. And so if you do nothing else to improve your health, definitely check out athleticgreens.com slash foodheals and place an order. And you're going to get a free one year supply of vitamin D. I mean, this is an offer like I've never seen. And five free travel packs. Those are the little packs of athletic greens that you can throw into your water and you can take them on the plane. You can throw them in your car, wherever you want. You just shake it up in a water bottle and take it on the go. So I think it's a great deal, Food Heals Nation. I'm super grateful that I started taking my athletic greens. So join me, other health experts, athletes, and health conscious go-getters around the world to make a daily commitment to your health every day single day at athleticgreens.com slash food heals. Sunday morning rain is falling. That's what this ad makes me want to sing because it's get Sunday. All right, Food Heals Nation. So if you are having problems with your lawn, I have the solution for you. You know, I loved my lawn, my yard back in LA. I had a front yard and a backyard and gosh, I miss it so much. So when Sunday reached out and they were like, we want to help you take care of your lawns, I was like, I don't have a lawn anymore. So we're now testing it on my friend's lawn here in Florida. So I'm going to keep you updated with the before and after with the results, but let me tell you more about the product. So Sunday is more than just a lawn care product. It's a custom lawn care plan. It's got a variety of ways to help you grow a beautiful lawn, control weeds, and remove pests and they take all the guesswork and unwanted chemicals because you know I'm going to be as chemical free as possible in my life um, so that you can grow a beautiful lawn that's better for the people, pets, and the planet. Super important if you have dogs or any outdoor pets like I do and it's so easy. I just went to get Sunday. Dot com. I put in my home address and their free lawn analysis tool took care of the rest all in just seconds. They could see the lawn. It was really cool. <laughs> it's like very interesting technology. And they know the soil and climate data from your lawn so that they can create a tailored nutrient plan for you and your specific needs. I thought that was the coolest thing I had ever heard of. Um, so you get what your lawn needs and nothing that it doesn't. It's kind of like if you go to a functional medicine doctor and they test what you need nutritionally and they go, yeah, you need this vitamin and this hormone, you're deficient in this, and then you get exactly what you need and none of the extras. They do the same thing for your lawn. I mean, that is really, really revolutionary. So Sunday is great. It's made with ingredients that you can actually pronounce seaweed, iron, molasses, so you can grow a better lawn and feel better about it. Non-toxic for your pets, no chemicals, and everything is waiting at your door when you need it. It's just easy delivery. You know, lawn care doesn't have to take up your whole day. It can take less than 15 minutes and this stuff really works. I cannot wait to show you the before and afters of my friend's lawn. So stay tuned for that. Let Sunday take the guesswork out of growing a greener, more beautiful lawn this spring. Go to GetSunday.com slash Food Heals. You'll get $20 off your custom lawn plan at checkout. That's $20 off your custom lawn plan at checkout at GetSunday.com slash food heals and stay tuned for our before and after photos here's a here's just a crazy piece and this will put a bow on it but basically when I was at this live and weight loss camp I met a girl from Italy she came and said and she had been had an eating disorder and had just binged in Persian night before and asked for someone to stay with her 
She goes, I was looking on Craigslist and I go, you're not going to find someone on Craigslist to stay with you. I will stay with you. So I did. And I was in a leadership program at the time. I'd go to class and teach her everything I was learning at night. Well, two weeks later, my landlord, I was living on Abbott Kinney, which I loved. My landlord said, you have to move out. I was devastated. I told Why? Him because they were moving back in. He's like, I knocked up my girlfriend and <laughs> moving back in. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I'd been there for seven years. I love this place. Oh, and no. so I was so devastated. I told um, her name was Veronica, the girl from Italy who I'd been staying with and at night to help her. And she goes, well, then come to Italy to coach me. And I was Ooh. like, what? And she goes, well, yes, <laughs> I wanted a coach now and I wanted you, but I knew how much you love living in L.A., so I didn't ask, but if you have no home, come coach me in Italy. I love where this is going. Um, Ashley and I met in Italy. Oh, Magical. really? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so that's kind of how it went. And I gave my two weeks a week later, packed up my everything and put into storage. And off I flew to Italy with my dog to go work with this young girl. And that's what put me on the path in my profession. And when I got back, and, and because I'd had so much background of my own healing, when I say my mom saying psych at Berkeley, all this, I kind of knew what to do with her. But when I got back to the United States after I then started like formal training of how do I really work with people and haven't stopped since constantly learning to expand my skill set. So, yeah. And so how long ago was it that you went to Italy and learned how to become a coach for other people, right? How long ago was that until now? Yeah, that was 2009. So about 11 years ago. I'm like, I don't do math. I know. That's why I was stopping for a second. I'm Asian. I'm Asian and I don't do math either. I think that's 12. All you listeners do not judge me. (laughs) I always count on my fingers when I do the tip, when I do the 20%. Yeah, I mean, my friend Lindsay calls me out. She's like, did you just count on your fingers? And I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, I did, snarky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've been on this journey for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, from childhood and beyond, but then really finding your unique talent of helping people in that way and just going deeper into that. And then tell us about, you had some very <laughs> traumatic for women experiences with your dating life, which, you know, that is a facet of our self-love programming as well because as much as your mother showed you unconditional love no matter what we can all be hurt in love and so tell us what happened there with the love of your life at that time Mm, girl well it wasn't just (laughs) sorry (laughs) it's okay let's just open this wound right now don't you worry no um so I the I think the one that you're you're referencing was the last relationship before the one I have now, which was about six years ago. And it's interesting because I have actually old pattern called in or attracted men who cheated. Um, I have had four total, and wow. one great yeah one fantastic relationship when I was in my early twenties, but he didn't fit the model of how I thought I should be treated by a man. Like he Mm -hmm. was actually nice to me. (laughs) So, (laughs) Oh dear. Yeah. I was like, God forbid you're a good guy. (laughs) Yeah. Stop being so nice. Why do you, are you being so kind and supportive? This is really odd. And so I rejected him and pushed him away, which is actually what happens, right? Anything, whatever we believe. And at the time for a very long time, I believed that I was unlovable just Mm -hmm. as I was. I was like, the only way I could get love is by achieving or by doing things for people. I never felt enough in relationship. Um, And because of that, I had attracted men who reflected that, these men who cheated. And Can I just pause for one second? I I wish we had an audience right now because I would say, raise your hand if you can relate to what Steph just said. I mean, my hand is in the air. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, I mean, it's like this is – and I'm I'm a student of psychology as well. You're a student of psychology. This is stuff that we're now really into and obsessed with. And it is Psychology 101. But gosh, I didn't – I had no idea. And I rejected love in the same way. And – feeling the feelings of unworthiness that I had. And when I, when someone wasn't a bad boy and treated me well, I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> and what it was in my 20s too. Yeah. yeah. Like, Why are you so nice to me? Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you, yeah. buddy? And like, it's just fascinating. And now I can see it completely different. And I've completely changed my life. That was 20s as well. So long, long time ago. But I just wanted to, to shout that out because I feel like that is very relatable. But yeah. please continue. Yeah. And so it's interesting because 
how the mind works is whatever does not jive with what we believe, right? whatever's programmed in our subconscious, whatever in our external world is in opposition to that, it's actually perceived as a threat by the mind. So hence the, if I believe I'm unlovable and you're now coming at me with a ton of love, it's perceived as a threat by the mind. You're like, what do I do with this? This isn't right. This isn't a line. Get out, get out. And we get rid of it. So we'll sabotage it, destroy it, or we'll run away from it, which is what I did, right? I broke the relationship and went off my way on my way. And then the next person I dated was a sociopath. It was perfect. And oh, we know a couple of those. <laughs> know nothing about that. Yeah. I was like, oh, this feels familiar. Okay. This is what's right. Yeah. Treat me like shit yeah. and lie to me like and gaslight me. It's so that was what I'd been accustomed to. And so after that one, actually, I took a break and I was like, okay, that was probably the most toxic one I had dated. And I took time to start healing, but didn't do enough because in, in the next relationship that I called in, I was like, oh, this guy is different. And he would never cheat on me. He wouldn't even lie about the silliest little things. Like I, mm-hmm. well, I'm not going to say, but well, because it's, well, I'll just say, but basically I needed a landline because with coaching, if my cell phone cut out, I didn't want to do that to a client. So I told my boyfriend at the time, I said, Hey, can you get a landline? And if you tell them that you have like a learning disorder, they'll actually give you a really easy number. And I wanted a really easy number. And he goes, uh, I'm not going to lie about that. And so I thought, Oh, this guy won't even lie about the tiniest little thing like that. Hmm. And so he's very trustworthy. And I had him. He'll actually use that to make you feel bad about yourself. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and I pegged him in so many ways just by observing him. I was like, wow, he's a very honest man. And I actually gave up some of my non-negotiables to be with him. Wow. Because at least I was like, I was so deeply desperate to not be hurt that I was willing to give up things that were extraordinarily important to me in a partnership. Right. Mm-hmm. And then... We moved in together. We'd been together for three years, moved in, talked about getting married, having children, and I meditate every day. And after a morning meditation, I got the direct divine command that said checkmatch.com. Oh my God, I have chills. Yeah. And that's how he and I had met. And so I logged in with my old passcodes. It took me to his profile. Uh, I saw that he had taken swiped photos off of my, my Facebook page of him and put it onto his profile. And wow. it said online now DM me. And I still remember what I read in the bio it, in the, what it started. It said, I just broke up with my girlfriend. She's amazing, but not the one I'm looking for a little spoon to my big oh spoon my- and on it went. Oh, my God, Stephanie. Oh, my heart hurts. And to clarify, clarify, clarify for us, he had not broken up with you. Nope. No, we were living together, talking (laughs) about having kids, getting married, you know, all the things. Yeah, still doing sweet things for me. So I was like, this guy's different. I have to know how you confronted him. (laughs) (laughs) We need the dirty details. Okay. So I texted him and I said, hey, do you have an active profile? on match.com question mark and then I wrote oh actually looks like you do it says online now dm me and then I after that I wrote I'm out and then he called and called and called and called I didn't pick up and I literally called one of my best friends she's like grab your stuff and bear my dog and get over here right now Mm. and so that's what I did and I went over to her place and didn't talk to him for a few days. I mean, literally, what are you going to say to me? Yeah. What are you going to say? Regroup. Come on. Yeah. Stand in your power. Wait till you can stand yeah. in your power. And I know everyone has their different um, ways of responding or reacting to cheating. But I think because it had been so frequent for me, it was very black and white. Like, you do it, you're done. Yeah. And so there was no discussion really for me. And I also realized, because I've been doing all this personal development work at this point, I was like, the common denominator is me. It has nothing to do with these guys, right? They, they didn't do anything wrong. What is, what is going on with, within me that I keep attracting the same dude? And I thought I had done enough like healing you know, with the last one, the sociopath, but I hadn't. And it's also when I later realized the deep work in the subconscious 
that's what changed the game. So I could read all the books that, that I wanted to or you know, do all the burning rituals of what I don't want and releasing them on the full moon. But if still at a deep subconscious level, I held these beliefs of feeling unworthy of love, feeling unlovable, feeling not good enough. It didn't matter. That's what was doing the picking for me still, which I thought I'd changed. But again, I only did it on a conscious level, not on a, con- a subconscious. And when it's conscious, you're constantly engaged in these mental gymnastics <laughs> of trying to outsmart your own self. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's funny is when you said, you know, there's only so much I can burn under the full moon. Ashley and I were literally talking about this other the other day. We're like, all right, enough writing and burning. Like, we're done with this. Like, why is it still coming back? There's only so much writing and burning we can do. So it is accessing that next level uh, subconscious. So I would love to hear more about how to do that. Because very often, I think we are doing surface level work that we perceive as the deep level work. And we're where do you draw the line and how do you know the difference? Yeah. So the subconscious is like when it's deep in your belief system, right? Not just in your beliefs, but your subconscious is also part of your soma, your body. We store traumas and memories inside of our body that don't really have language, like a specific mm-hmm. belief, but it is a reaction that can occur when something feels unsafe for us. It's coded into the body. So there's multiple, that's where you have to go to create the change is a rewiring in the complete subconscious. And again, just not on the conscious level. And for me, I've found four different ways to engage with the subconscious to create the change. The first, which takes a lot of time, but it still works, is through repetition, mm-hmm. right? The more you continue to do something, the deeper the grooves become in your in with using neuroplasticity that eventually you'll pick on that new belief or pick on a new pattern behavior. And so it takes something though, but that is one way to start to really engage and get something into your subconscious, a pattern that you want. Then another way- Is this like the I am exercise? Yeah, you can absolutely do the I am exercises. And the most important though is doing it with feeling because how our subconscious communicates is in images and emotions, which is why visualization and also adding emotions into it can be extraordinarily impactful for us. Or if you're repeating a word, but you're using emotionality inside of it, that's what has it deepen into the subconscious. Yeah. So not just, I mean, repetition, as you said, but not just repeating something in a monotone voice, really saying it with passion and purpose is purpose. Like you mean it and trying your best to feel that feeling that you're visualizing that you're saying out loud. That's really what makes the shift because it's like your subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and what you're envisioning and so if you're giving it that if you're giving it the opposite feeling every day of oh woe is me or oh I'm always cheated on or oh I believe this then that's going to continue to happen for you until you start telling yourself no now I believe this and I'm going to vibrate here all of the time and then you just start to vibrate there more and more and more and more oh let's vibrate there yeah Yeah, (laughs) I also am a fan of vibration in other formats all formats of I Exactly. Some that have batteries. Anyway, so yes. with the Trust <laughs> us to end up there. <laughs> Sorry. You know we're gonna go there. You lob that one up. But basically, yeah, all forms of vibration is most important because we are a vibrational frequency, right? And the thing mm-hmm. is, is that a lot of times what happens is we say we want something, but then what's internally wired is the opposite. So Yes, your thoughts are vibration, but your feelings are vibration too. And it's actually stronger than the vibration of your thought. So if you're sending off the signal like, I desire this, but then you go, but I feel unworthy to have it. Well, it becomes a chaotic vibration and not a clean shot to actually attract what it is that you say that you want. So where that's why, again, you have to get into the feeling, into the subconscious, into the beliefs where it matters the most. And the challenge with affirmations, right, when so that's why adding emotion to it and like you said, Ali, saying it like you mean it and really feeling it. Well, the more that you do that, that becomes a familiar feeling in your body. And what's familiar is what the brain likes. It's what the body Can I share something here that maybe resonates? So I went through a major sort of personal shift about four or five years ago. And at the time, I was doing a lot of soul cycle. I was way about the soul cycle. I was living part-time in D.C. And the hotel that I was based in for work was right next to a soul cycle studio. 
And during, I don't know if anybody listening knows the soul song. It's the next to the last song at the end. And the instructor's giving you like all this little pep talk. Well, I would give myself a pep talk. Mm. And I had this whole series of I am statements that I would walk myself through. And it took a really freaking long time to believe them. Mm -hmm. But because I was connecting the statement to the physicality and the emotion in the room and the sort of endorphin high that I was on from going really hard on a bike, I started to feel a personal shift Mm -hmm. based on the I am statements that I was repeating to myself every day in class Mm -hmm. for whatever that's worth. That's what's up, girl. That's what I'm talking about. You are. That's how to actually use these statements. Because a lot of times people will say, well, I've used them. They don't work. You're not using yeah. it in a way that actually supports you. Because what happens, the challenge to when you're saying these statements without using the feeling and getting and attaching the belief with an emotion, because the feeling is where we go to the fastest, right? So words mean nothing. It's the feeling that's attached to the words that those are the the words or beliefs that we go to most rapidly. And when we're saying these affirmations, when we're in a conscious state, like right now we're in a conscious alpha state, brainwave state, our logical mind is also very active right now. So a lot of times people say like, I'm beautiful, I'm smart, I'm enough. And then the logical mind or the, the conscious mind is going, BS, that's not true. What are you doing? This is so weird. I don't understand. And then now you have the battle, right? So when you can override it with the emotion, that's one thing. And then another way to actually like bypass all of that is through hypnosis. That's how I found Mm -hmm. the most effective way to work with my clients to actually create the change rapidly. That's how we learned. When we were kids, we were in a state of hypnosis, meaning you're just fully suggestible to whatever people tell you. So it goes into your subconscious easier. It becomes part of your blueprint. And that's that. And when you can actually put yourself into a hypnotic state, so moving out of our brainwaves go from alpha to, or sorry, beta to alpha to theta to delta. If you can get it into the theta state, which is where I love alpha is also pretty effective, but like alpha theta brainwave state, that's when that judger part of your mind start, it, it, it relaxes and we're able to actually get in and access the subconscious where it matters the most. And so that's another tool of the four that I like to get in to create the change in the subconscious mind. Food Heals Nation, last week I talked about something that I wasn't supposed to talk about. Whoops, I want to apologize to you and to Ritual because I started talking about a protein powder that they sent me that hadn't launched yet. I apologize, but please go check it out now because it is now available. I accidentally talked about it too early, um, but it is available now. So let me talk about it again because Ritual, the multivitamin company you know, love and trust um, that I made Ashley do that taste testing of and it tasted minty and it's just so delicious and the vitamins are so beautiful. Um, Well, they have made a protein powder and... It's great. Um, If you listen to our last episode, I had Ashley taste test it too, and we decided that it tasted like a vanilla cupcake. So why choose Ritual and why choose their protein powder? Well, first of all, you deserve to know what you're putting in your body and why you're doing it. And so Ritual has the one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. So you always know what's in the formulation, where the ingredients come from, and why they're included. Um, It supports your daily health. So for tomorrow as much as today, it's made with nutrients to support bones, brains, muscles, to help you maintain muscle mass as you age. It's clean. It's plant-based. It's specifically created to support the nutrient needs of different life stages, 18 and over, pregnancy, postpartum, 50 plus. And it's got that 20 grams of pea protein plus a complete amino acid profile. And of course, the peas are grown sustainably and regeneratively farmed right here 
and the U.S. And just like every ritual product, there's no added sugar, sugar alcohols, and it is soy-free, gluten-free, and formulated with non-GMO ingredients. So shake up your ritual, try the multivitamins if you haven't already, and if you need a protein powder that tastes like vanilla cupcake, which I think that you do, Ritual has got your back. My listeners get 10% off during your first three months. So go to ritual.com slash food heals and add the essential protein to your diet today. Ritual.com slash food heals. And it is available now. I am sorry that I advanced, gave you advance notice of a product that wasn't available for a couple more days. I do apologize, but it's there now. So check it out. And what I love about Ritual is that They know you're going to love it so much, they offer a money-back guarantee if you're not 100% in love with the product. So check it out. Again, ritual.com slash food heals. You'll get 10% off your first three months. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. I'm here hanging out with Tina from Just Thrive Health, and we're just geeking out on why it's so important to really understand our body's ability to heal itself and how we can support our own immune system. So Tina, what are some of your tips for immune system support? Yeah, well, one of my favorite tips is taking a spore-based probiotic. Um, the One of the biggest differences with a spore-based probiotic is its ability to survive the gastric system. Most probiotics would die before they ever get to the intestines. The stomach acid would kill them. With spore-based probiotics, they actually get to the intestines alive where they go to work for about 21 to 28 days. And why that's so important is 70 to 80% of our immune system is actually found in our gut. And so we need to be supporting our gut in order to support our immune system. In fact, it is our immune system, or I'm sorry, our gut that is actually signaling our immune cells to go to work. Amazing. That makes so much sense. Thank you for breaking it down for us. And I know that they say the gut is the second brain. So just like you want to support your brain, you got to support that gut. So it's just thrivehealth.com. You can get your spore-based probiotics from Tina. Use the discount code FOODHEALS15 to get 15% off your order and put them on auto ship so you never have to think about it again and support your gut. Food Heals Nation, if you're like me, you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox. And I personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day. But have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking? So according to the Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in the U.S. has harmful contaminants in its tap water. So ditch the tap water, ditch the cheap water filters, and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long-lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love 
Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. And I would like to ask a question about hypnosis. Yeah. So Um, When it comes to hypnosis, I have certainly um, been to a practitioner's office and I've done it with someone. What do you think or is it a practice that you can cultivate, learn and practice on yourself and do self-hypnosis as well? Or do you always need to work with a practitioner to assist you? Yeah, no, I think there's absolutely ways of doing it on your own. I actually have a self-hypnosis course. Because there's way to, to learn. Of course to do you do. Indu- <laughs> <laughs> there's ways of learning how to do an induction on yourself and to get yourself into that theta brainwave state. I know how to do it. I've done. I've actually had someone work on me, and I've done it enough times that I can do a few techniques and boom, I'm in. So okay, you absolutely can and train yourself into states of hypnosis and do the work. The only difference when it's like hetero hypnosis, meaning someone else is working on you, versus self hypnosis is that sometimes there's processes that you do when someone's in state that you couldn't do yourself. Like there are processes that I guide people through that if I was trying to guide myself through it, I'm actually moving out of theta because I'm starting to work more consciously to remember what's the next step. Okay. Did I do it right? Is this a versus being fully relaxed and allowing someone to guide me and take me on the journey. Um, So some of the healing modalities that I use It's better if someone else is doing the process on you. Um, That that, that's probably like the only time I would say, but you can absolutely do it on your own. And something that I like to do a lot is to make my own recordings. Mm, Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, we're actually most suggestible to ourselves. So having your own voice. Why? I mean, you listen to yourself all the time. You're you're in your head. all the time. (laughs) So whatever you say, you're like, yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. You know, because you're just literally literally listening to your old programming. And that's what feels right and familiar. So it's correct. I took this amazing course back in LA years ago um, at this Kundalini Yoga Center. Um, And what we had to do was a workshop. And essentially, we had we did a meditation with the teacher. And then she said, Okay, now fill this out. And so we all had to fill out the meditation with our own answers of essentially what we wanted to release and what we wanted to manifest Mm. just to simplify. And then we had to record it just on a phone or whatever. And then um, that was our take home. And then they sent us music and you could mix it if you wanted or you could pay them to mix it, whatever. But I listened to that meditation every single day for at least like three months or something. I'm telling you, I got everything, even a new car. Do you know what I mean? Like it was so, I don't know why I haven't done it again to come to think of it, but it was so powerful. And I think it's exactly to your point, Steph, is that we are so highly suggestible. And when it comes from our own voice, it's almost like perhaps our higher self is is speaking with us, Mm -hmm. speaking to us. Yep. 100%. And um, that's why a lot of times when I do hypnosis recordings, so I actually, when I work privately with my clients, I create a custom recording for them that they listen to for 21 days minimum post session. And what I do before I even uh, record that, I have a, a very thorough intake form asking them questions of their goals and what they actually want to create and all these other things in addition to like the block questions. But what I do is I take a lot of their language, the way that they word things, how they would, um, you know, what they want, and I inject it into their scripts. Beautiful. Because again, that's what they want. And so, and a lot, what I found with a lot of hypnotherapists is they kind of just do a recording on the fly if they even do one at all. And they're just saying whatever they feel comes to mind versus actually really being deliberate and using the client's language and what it is that they want. Um, because you know, if someone were to say, even when I do the stuff around love, I'll ask them, do you want to say husband, partner, beloved, 
soulmate? Like, what is it for you? Because if you say something that they're like, oh, that doesn't connect. Now you just pull them out of state and they're going to be ruminating on how weird that word was, or it doesn't actually drop in. So it's really important to know and to use your own language. And like what you just did, Ali, like everyone who's listening, make a recording of what you want, using it in positive, affirmative, what you want, not what you don't want. Cause that's the challenge too, that when um, people will create their own recordings, they'll say, well, I don't want to be like in debt, or I don't want to be single anymore. I don't want to feel alone, or I don't want to feel unworthy. It's like, well, then what do you actually want? And that's what you record. Yeah. So in the meditation that we did in the workshop, I just want to share if anyone wants to do it for themselves. Um, you got to, uh, you had a, you, you put yourself in a room full of gifts and each gift you unwrapped was something that you wanted to manifest. And so you could literally unwrap a boyfriend or like, you know, whatever you wanted, <laughs> unwrap a heart for self-love, whatever it was, representative, whatever it represented to you um, so that there wasn't, I don't want Debt. I don't want to be alone because you had to unwrap a present that was a gift. And so that was a nice way to visualize it in such a way that you couldn't manifest what you didn't want. So I thought that was just a lovely thing. And now I'm feeling really inspired, Stephanie, by this conversation to go back and do a meditation for myself again. But before we get to the other two, I do have a question for you because I think that maybe other people may feel this way. I've always been someone who is pretty darn clear on what she wanted. But mm -hmm. after the pandemic, after blowing up my life, leaving California, going to Florida, blowing up my marriage, doing all the things I've done lately, which <laughs> I know we need a major catch up on because yes. you left L.A. too, um, which hopefully we'll have time to get to to see how you're doing. But um, I'm at a place where I don't know what I want because like I'm in this place where I'm like, do I want to live here? Where do I want to go? Do I want to continue on this career path or do I want to pivot over here? Can I do both? And I'm so used to having clarity that not having clarity is kind of throwing my manifestation process mm -hmm. for a loop. And also, I think, bringing me a lot of confusing messages. So um, I keep getting in little accidents. So today I was walking my dog and um, she went up a curb and I was, I was tripped and I was thrown down onto the curb and I was bleeding and I had gotten in a bike accident previously. And I'm like, the universe is throwing all kinds of, oh, the shower um, thing curtain rod fell on. Me. Oh and I'm like, I am manifesting all this chaos. And I don't know why. And I think it's because I'm super indecisive. But I, so sorry. Manifest clarity. Yeah. Okay. So how do we met? That's a good, good way to put it, Ash. So yeah, like if we if we feel super clear, it's kind of easier to try to manifest what we want if we just go, okay, I know what I don't want. So now I have a tool. Thank you, Stephanie, to manifest what I do want. But how do I get clear on what I want and ask my guides for guidance or or hear the message? Like you clearly heard the message. Stephanie was in a meditation and her guides or a higher power said, go check match.com. Like basically your boyfriend's cheating on you. How do we access that wisdom if we're unclear? Well, first of all, I'm sending you love for such a crazy day. <laughs> Clearly, the universe speaks to you very loudly, so yay for that. Uh, it gets louder and louder. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't want to be injured anymore, okay? <laughs> You're going to have to be wearing like sparring gear or just like a bubble around you. Please, universe, don't hurt me. But, uh, I want to go outside with a helmet on my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. So my biggest recommendation is silence. So often we try to figure things out with the conscious linear mind. Yes. And that's not really where our soul answers are. So sitting in silence, and I know it can be difficult for many people, I'm like, exactly, that's why you need to do it, is, yeah. <laughs> um, is the first place and space I offer people up to gain clarity if that's what they desire. And you so, just caused me to take the deepest breath. Uh, mm. okay. Yeah, slow down. That was actually the message I kept hearing for you, Allie. It's like, slow down, girl. Like, That's always my message. Yeah. It's dark. like, where are you trying to get to? You're good. <laughs> Everything's going to happen in the perfect time. Just trust. Like, I feel like that's probably one of your greatest lessons, too, is like trust, right? And yeah. you're not going to actually get that lesson uh, or you're not, you're not going to actually have that slow down and rods not hitting your head until you actually start to lean more into that energy. And... The thing is, even if we don't have clarity, I always tell people your most important and valuable asset is your energetics. And so if you're feeling confused, you're feeling chaotic internally, well, that is what you're going to create externally. So your energetics are off. That's it. There's nothing wrong. 
So take a moment to slow down or give yourself what you need or tune in and go, what's my next step or what is it that I need in this moment? And that's what you need to do to actually start to clean up your energy or even doing grounding practices or vibrational work. Like I dance, like when I'm feeling off, I just dance and I move the energy through my body and I always feel amazing afterwards. And I feel like it's a reset. Everyone's got their thing. And then another thing. Oh, see? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Oh, so good. Yes. Yeah. So shaking off, getting in. Uh, so the first step is silence. And then something else I like to play with is there's so many techniques you can use to engage with your subconscious, which I believe is connected to source, right? So when you can engage there, that's where the soul answers are. But something else you can do is grab a post-it note, write the question that's on your heart that you want clarity around and put it in a place where you'll see it pretty frequently. And whenever you walk by it, stop for a moment, look at the question. And then I always like to put my hand on my heart. I'm big, I do a lot actually just putting my hand on my heart. I'll close my eyes and I'll ask the question sincerely and be like angels, guides, or universe, God, just tell me, you know, what is my, should I be living here in Florida? Is this in my highest alignment? And then just sit with a question for a second and then walk on your way and let it go. Because now what you're doing is it's mental priming. You're actually telling you the subconscious loves to figure problems out and to mm -hmm. sort things for you. So now you're like, here you go. I'm going to actually work with my brain and give it problems to figure out while I'm going around my life, just being joyful and playful and do the things that love and, and light my soul on fire. And then eventually the answer comes through. It could be through a meditation. It could be through a friend you talk to. It could be through a sign you're walking down the street and you see it, or it could be through so many different ways, but that's another tool I use to gain clarity. So I don't know if that helps. I love, I love that you said, ask it and let it go yeah. because we can just agonize and wring our hands and that gets us nowhere. Mm -hmm. But when we ask it and let it go, it's like inviting our higher guidance to yeah. talk to us. And sometimes, I mean, we all need an invitation to have a conversation yeah. <laughs> once in a while. Um, I like that you said that. Yeah. And the letting go is the trusting. The constantly yeah. trying to figure it out is being in fear or scarcity. Yeah. Right. Fear and control. Yeah. Control. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. I yeah. was like, I think it's a control thing. And mm -hmm. that has been a theme for me for quite a while is letting go of control because a lot of people can probably relate to this. When you go through a trauma, mm -hmm. one of the byproducts of that trauma very often, I think in most cases, is the need to control everything around you. So it may show up in different ways. It may be, I need to control my body. I need to control a person. I need to control um, my career or my finances or whatever. And it becomes a, a kind of a sickness, mm -hmm. but it keeps us where we think is balance where we think, well, if I have control over this, nothing can touch me. But it's an unhealthy pattern that we get ourselves into because we felt out of control for so long because of the trauma that we endured. So again, it's like consciously, I know this stuff. I know I need to slow down, but it is getting it ingrained into that subconscious and going, well, how are you gonna actually going to do it? You know, totally. yeah, you can know all the things. Yeah. Are you doing them? Yeah. Are and you practicing? Yeah. And when you're choosing from that place, you're actually choosing from fear, lack, scarcity, right? So even right. in my last relationship, the guy that I gave up my non-negotiables for, I was choosing him from don't cheat, not cheat. Oh, he won't cheat. He won't versus what do I want? Oh, I want an honest, loving, trustworthy, faithful man. So again, when we're trying to control, it's because we're trying to control an outcome we do not want, which then actually begets that outcome we don't want. Oh, so well said. Yes. Uh, things get so much fun when we just say, fuck it, let's see what beautiful things can happen. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> let's co-create. Yes. <laughs> but I'm interested because you have this program where you talk about successful, high achieving women wanting to call in love. And I wonder if there's this juxtaposition between this need to control, because when you are a successful, high achieving yeah. woman, there is a certain level of type A usually. Yes, girl. <laughs> that goes into that, uh, that adds maybe an additional layer of struggle to it. Yeah. So it's when I left that last relationship, you know, I did the most logical thing I could do, which is first avoid men at all costs in relationships. 
And mm -hmm. secondly, pour my entire life and energy into my career because I knew I could control my career and it wouldn't hurt me. Ooh, been there. Right? Actually. So hence a lot of the, these high achieving, <laughs> successful women, what I found is we've, many of us have channeled a lot of masculine energy and it's been an unconscious channeling because of our history with the masculine, right? Mm -hmm. And really to me, when a woman is so embodying the masculine, it's actually an armor that we put on to protect ourselves versus mm -hmm. the essence of who we are. Mm. And so with the rewire for love, the course, here's the funny thing is like a lot of my clients are very high profile CEOs of companies, entrepreneurs, I have some celebrity clients as well to, you know, every, that's the type of client I, I have. And so when I was thinking about the next offering I was going to do, I was going to put together like a C-suite type of program Mm -hmm. And I was doing market research on it. And one of the, the people who would have been a perfect client, she is a badass, really high up there in a massive company. And when I said, what keeps you up at night? She said, you know, like you, I'm 43, but I'm single and I don't have kids. And I wonder, have I lost out on the opportunity to have children? Have I lost out mm -hmm. on my opportunity to be in partnership? And then that week, after I talked to her, or when I talked to her, I had three referrals of extraordinarily high-powered women. One of them is literally like the top of Facebook, and then another one's a big leadership, women's leadership coach, and then another one who's a really high-level executive. All three women were referred in, and they all wanted the same thing. I've achieved wow. all the success. Yeah. I have more money than I could ever spend, more houses than I could ever live in, and when it comes to men or relationships, the moment I experience rejection, I go into these depression sp spirals, or it's been so hard for me to call in love, or I don't, all the things, right? And I was like, whoa. And so everything I do and create comes from divine download. And literally I got the message that was like, create this and support these women with this. Now here's the trick, because coming back to what you were asking me, Ashley, like, isn't it a trend and a control thing again to, to call in that love? Well, ultimately what this program is and what I really believe any true transformational program should embody is that it's not about trying to get the thing. It's about who you become, right? That you actually become the type of person that could naturally attract what it is you want. But it's not about I'm going to do this in order to get. It's just because I'm committed to becoming that person. And so inside Rewire for Love, the, the course that I have you know, we go in deep first to like clear any blocks or self-imposed limits. So getting rid of that vibrational energy that's repelling what we want and then actually rewiring your mind, body and soul to open you up to the power of love in general and also to your divine feminine. Like put your armor down, open yourself up to love. It's safe. You are safe in that. And for me, <laughs> you know, that program is more than just calling in a quality partner. It's a program where you will unlock your inner power. You're going to master your mental and emotional game, expand into self-love, own your worth, understand yourself on a deeper level, and transform yourself into becoming a powerful, intentional creator of your life and a magnet for anything that you actually want. If you call in a partner, cool, byproduct. But you, you're going to actually get to the place where you're not going to need or want to have anymore. You're going to be in the energetics of already having because you're so fulfilled within yourself right? You're giving so self-giving in the most beautiful ways. And then actually, naturally you call it in. So it's, so, it works so backwards the way that attraction the energy. The way that we think. Yeah. 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 I mean, really what I hear you say is um, so many of us, particularly in this, you know, success driven women, it's what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What yeah. else do I need to do? What do I need to put, do? Put on the yeah. to-do list. <laughs> Cross <laughs> off. <laughs> and, and if I can just check off these five things, then it will happen. But what you're saying is it's really who do I want to be? Yeah. Not need to be yeah. for somebody else, but who do I want to be for myself? I used to put write and burn on my to-do list. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't think that's a terrible thing, no. but like it was just because I had the satisfaction of crossing things off, mm. so I was more likely to do it, mm. <laughs> right? 
Actually, when I was commuting for work back and forth to D.C. and New yeah. York, I would do write and burn, and I set off a couple of fire alarms in, the <laughs> in hotels. hotel. <laughs> You're not supposed to do it in the hotel, actually. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see this happening, and you're like, oh, whoops, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. It's like no, no, it was more like me room. trying to douse water. <laughs> <laughs> like, I followed the rules. It says no smoking. I didn't smoke, but I burned stuff. Is that okay? <laughs> I was just praying up in here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, did my incense get out of hand? <laughs> um, so what I would love to do is go back to the tools um, that we interrupted because we got so excited about Rewire for Love. But um, the other remaining two tools that you're going to give us for our own self-healing. Yeah, so um, two other ways that I found that are extraordinarily powerful to access the subconscious to create the change there is through a high-impact event. And then the last is through somatic work. So through the body, through the energetics of the subconscious and the body. Um, but what I mean by high impact events is that if something occurs that is in opposition to what you believe, and it's such a big moment of experience where all of a sudden you have a new belief come in and it's wired with mm-hmm. a high emotional state that can rewire a belief immediately. And it can go in both directions. So for example, if you're afraid of speaking on stage and you booked a huge talk and you practice, 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 you finally get on stage and you rock it, then you might be like, oh my God, I love this. This is the best thing ever. And so instead (laughs) of being afraid of speaking and whatever stories that come along with it that would have created fear in you before, now you've literally rewired and you're like, this is, I want to do this all day, every day. Now on the opposite side, um, and this happened to me, but I rewired it again, was I got into a really bad car accident and boom, immediately a belief was formed around not being safe in a vehicle and not being safe actually in the streets. And I had all this fear and that was what was wired in. And so that was a high impact event. And I then had to do the deep healing work to rewire that. But that's what I mean by high impact event. And then through uh, the fourth, through somatic work, I facilitate breath work. I do some somatic experience work. I have psychosomatic techniques that I use to do mind body. So there's a lot of different ways to to rewire through using those types of techniques. Can you take us through what a so uh, what a psychosomatic practice might look like? Yeah. So one that I really love that I learned from my friend Dr. Truitt is called Havening. And it's a psychosomatic technique. It's difficult to actually show you by not having a camera, but I'll try to do my best. But essentially, psycho is is your mind and somatic is the body. So you're blending both. And in havening, what it does essentially is when you are in a heightened state, so you're in your sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, when you haven, you actually send um, calming signals to your mind and body that actually kick up delta waves. So like mm-hmm. the sleepy waves, right? So it actually rewires and has you go it back into your parasympathetic. So how you would do havening basically is if you have your hands and kind of hold all your fingers together, like have them up like you're waving at somebody, but hold all your hand, fingers together. It's my best. I'm trying to do, I'm like doing it in, in, in my office and then <laughs> We're doing it too. Okay, perfect. (laughs) And turn your palms towards yourself. But what you want to do starting, so putting both hands on your face, um, starting where your eyebrows would meet, like Mm -hmm. underneath your third eye. And then you're taking your hands and doing like a backwards three across your face. So you um, move your hands away from your brows to like your temples Mm -hmm. and then underneath your cheekbones and then you stop there and then you now come back again it's like a three and you come out to like kind of your jawline and then back to your chin and then what you do is from there if your hands are still touching your chin you cross your arms and put your arms on your shoulders almost like you're giving yourself a hug and then you drag your arms down your your hands down your arms to finally where your hands are touching and you kind of wipe them like you're wiping your hands off you know after you ate something 
but you just do we each just other. did it together yay and <laughs> there's, there's watching each other do this yay, <laughs> and there's videos online so whoever's listening and you're like going at ah, what is she saying go ahead and go on youtube and just type in havening and you'll find this technique it's powerful so when you do that and you just keep doing that that's the psycho so that's the body right the the soma and then the psycho piece is you do a distraction technique so you'd start humming a song that's very soothing or you can do a mind game where you're counting backwards every other number starting at 100 but what you're doing is if you're actually actively triggered by something right trauma response immediately instead of staying engaged in the trauma response you start havening so you're distracting your mind with humming a song or some sort of mental task a very simple one and i'm not going to go into all the different ones but you do that and then you do the physical part of havening which is sending kicking up those delta waves you immediately calm yourself and now you start to rewire in your body a different feeling when you think of the trigger and that's what we want to do is to desensitize right the old trigger and rewrite a new emotion over it so that it doesn't impact us anymore that's the rewiring and you can actually use havening to embed what you want in so it can be used to heal and desensitize but it can be also be used to embed in so let's say there's something that you want to feel lovable right <clears throat> but or to receive love in some way well if you believe i'm unlovable and say someone's coming at you with love we talked about this earlier you might feel this repelling energy inside your fight flight's going to go off you're going to want to run or um, sabotage. Well, instead, if you actually think about being loved and receiving love and you start to haven, you're actually sending those delta waves into your body with what you want going, it's safe to actually have this. It's okay to receive it because the only reason why we repel things is because it feels unsafe for us. And now what you're doing is you're embedding in the feeling of safety with the thing that you say that you want. It feels like mothering yourself yeah 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 and it sounds simple but we know that these practices um can be life-changing but do take time and we got to do the work so mm -hmm. i'm really excited to even even though i've done so much work on myself you get to a point where like am i done yet no just keep no. doing it and now i have some new tools to add to my healing toolbox because of this show today so yeah. thank you so much stephanie so yeah the this website is beautiful thank yes. you stephaniekwong.com k-w-o-n-g and you have your free meditation um, or hypnosis I should say audio that um, can help people manifest anything they want I think that's a great um, introduction to your world and how you can help people and if they want to work with you tell us about um, how they can work with you on one on one or if it's just the program right now what's going on if people are just like I need more Stephanie where should they go <laughs> Uh, so there's multiple different ways. I mean, with good gateways to get started, yeah, download that free hypnosis off my website to help with increasing manifestation. It's really about energetic alignment. That's what that guided hypnosis process is to align with what you want. I also have a self-hypnosis course um, that it's all of this is on my website, but um, that can help if you want to deepen your practice of how do I hypnotize myself for what I want. I also have a self-love course that people can go through, same thing, it's a self-study. So that's kind of, that's the way to work with me right now or to do rewire for love if it feels aligned because my one-on-one -on -one practice is very specific to who I work with and it's very limited. Like right now my practice is full on the one-on-one -on -one, so I'm not taking any on new clients. But in rewire for love, uh, which is the current launch right now, I am accepting new people in that if that's what they want. Um, I just know, you know, these tools work. I'm in a relationship with the love of my life right now where I, it actually blows my mind. And I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to actually be loved because I know that I'm lovable. Oh, wow. Here's a man that I can be in my storm. And he literally holds the most, like the safest harbor for me to be in. And it's, um, you know, it, it, it works when you do the work, but those are probably the best ways to, yeah, work with me now. And what a beautiful testament to the work that you do, um, because you've now you've done the love work and what you just described. That's what we all want. Right. Um, to know that we're lovable and then to feel that love and and stop denying what what's our birthright, what what is absolutely possible. And 
So thank you for sharing that with us. And the podcast is Rise Higher. It's a beautiful show. If you like Food Heals, you'll absolutely be a fan of this show. So subscribe to that, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Anything else you want to add? Instagram, um, website, like I said, stephaniekwong.com. It'll all be in the show notes. Any, anything else, Instagram, that you want to follow you? Um, my handle is at I am Stephanie Kwong. And that's pretty much like if people shoot DMs, that's, I'm pretty good about responding there. So that's another way to connect with me is via Instagram. I like the bookend of the I am. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, there's so many other Stephanie Kwongs out there and I was late to the Instagram game. So all the variations <laughs> of Stephanie Kwong was taken. I was like, I am Stephanie Kwong. And it was like, check. And I went, oh, great. It's mine. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. But it goes in perfect alignment because it's those I am statements that, you know, we use in our manifestation station product process anyway. This so is true. that's all amazing. Yes. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. It's been so much fun. All right, Food Heals Nation, thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed that episode. Special shout out to Ashley Fillingen, my co-host today. Follow her at Kick Ash Law. Follow me at Allison at Melody TV. And follow Stephanie at I am Stephanie Kwong. We'll see you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.